Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. 13 people have been reported killed in a US raid in Syria's Idlib. Bodies of refugees have been found near Turkey's and Greece's border. A new report finds abusive labor conditions at the Dubai 2020 Expo. And farmers protest in Pakistan against rising inflation and taxes. At least 13 people have been killed in a, U in a US Special Forces raid in Syria. The overnight raid targeted the densely populated town of Atme in the rebel-held Idlib province. Tens of thousands of people displaced by the war reside in the area, which borders Turkey. The Hayat Tehrir al-Sham terror group controls part of the province. The Pentagon stated early on February 3rd that a successful counter-terrorism operation had been conducted in northwest Syria. It added that there had been no US casualties and later said an ISIS leader was killed in the raid. The operation allegedly targeted someone affiliated with Al-Qaeda. Residents told news agencies that the raid targeted a single building in the area. They awoke to the sound of helicopters around 1 a.m. and described a barrage of attacks two hours later. After the house was hit by missiles, U.S. forces stormed it in a ground operation. Residents reported loudspeakers being blasted, asking women and children to leave the area. Reuters cited eyewitness accounts stating that heavy gunfire and explosions could be heard. An Idlib-based activist stated that there had been clashes between fighters and U.S. forces. Thursday's raid took place just days after the U.S. carried out airstrikes in the city of Hasaka. The Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces were engaged in a week-long fight with the Islamic State terror group at the al sinar prison. The bodies of 12 refugees have been discovered inside Turkey, near its border with Greece. They were found partially clothed and were believed to have frozen to death. Turkey's Interior Minister Suleiman Solu stated that the bodies showed sign of frostbite and were without shoes. He added that 12 people were part of a group of 22 who had been pushed back by Greece. The country has repeatedly been accused of this practice, which is illegal under international law. Greece has de denied the allegations, including the statements made by Turkey on Wednesday. However, international NGOs, including Amnesty International, have documented such expulsions or pushbacks for years. In a 2021 report, the organization said that pushbacks had become Greece's de facto migration policy. Migrants reported being subjected to severe beatings, strip searches and detention. On the 13th of January, Nor Norwegian NGO Aegean Boat Report reported that 25 Afghan refugees had been pushed back by armed commandos on Lesbos. The UN has said that over 2,500 people died while trying to reach Europe from North Africa and Turkey just in 2021. The European Union's border agency Frontex has also been implicated in the pushbacks in violation of its own laws. Turkey has meanwhile been declared a safe third country which excludes five nationalities from the Greek asylum process altogether. Migrant workers at Dubai's 2020 Expo have stated that they are being subjected to highly abusive conditions. These testimonies are part of a new report by human rights research group Equidem. The 2020 Expo is underway in the UAE and features over 190 national pavilions. 90% of workers employed in the private sector in the Emirates are migrants. Equidem interviewed 69 workers from India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan and African countries including Kenya. Over 50% of these stated that they had been forced to pay illegal recruitment fees which pushes workers into severe debt. They also reported not being provided employment contracts. Others could not read them because they were not translated into their own language as is mandated by law. Two-thirds of workers said they did not receive wages and benefits on time or in full. More than a third said they had been subjected to bullying and racial discrimination. The report also found that passports of almost all of these workers had been confiscated by their employers. Equidem argues that these conditions might amount to forced labour. In October 2021, an event coordinator has announced that six workers had died and over 70 had been seriously injured leading up to the Expo. The European Parliament urged member states to boycott the event, citing rights violations in the UAE. Human Rights Watch has also criticized the Expo as an attempt by the Emirati government to whitewash its abuses. And for our final story, farmers in Pakistan are gearing up for a major protest on February 14. The Pakistan Kisan Ittehad, or PKI, is organizing a march against the withdrawal of a general sales tax exemption on agricultural inputs. 
the action is part of a series of mobilizations in the Punjab and Sindh provinces of that country. Farmers are demanding that the government address issues including rising inflation. A central focus of the protest has been on the acute shortage of fertilizer, mainly the chemical urea. The Dawn newspaper reported that wheat farmers were being forced to pay up to 1,000 rupees over the officially fixed rate. The scarcity is also worsened due to hoarding and illegal smuggling across the Durand line. Hundreds of farmers and the Pakistan People's Party held a protest against the crisis in the city of Rahim Yar Khan on January 16th. The PKI has also been opposing the imposition of new taxes on electricity used for agricultural tube wells. It's also said the current government has added over 8 rupees per unit on the fixed tariffs. Farmers are demanding that the government return to the fixed rate of 5 rupees 35 paise. Other demands include the abolition of fuel price adjustment from, from tube wells and re reinstating the tax exemption. The PKI have said that if these demands are not fulfilled, then more protests will spread to other areas, including Balochistan, Islamabad and Lahore. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on these stories, you can visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.